Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sky Over the East, works from the collection of Bardu Art Foundation, presented by Abu Dhabi Music and Arts Foundation. Before we proceed to the gallery for the official opening of the exhibition, we have the unique opportunity of meeting the man behind this selection of historical artworks. In conversation with Abu Dhabi classic Athens Matthew Samson, please welcome the founder of Bardu Art Foundation, Safan Sarut El Fasmi. Right, thank you, Kamal. Um, Sultan, I'm just going to dive straight in there. Um, a, a big picture, if you pardon the pun. Why start an art collection? What drove you? Uh, why not start an art collection? <laughs> um, I think uh, what, what drove me is, when I was living in France, I, 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 had a, I had a student card, and I used to go to museums all the time. And, uh, and I, you know, I only discovered that we had in the Arab world this very rich tradition and culture of, uh, of art that I wasn't aware of uh, before, uh, before university. And I realized that we have a, 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 you know, art from all over the Arab world, you know, different ethnic groups, different uh, 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 traditions of art, whether it was, uh, and the Arab world did go through all these important phases, uh, cubism, abstract, uh, uh, landscape, portrait works, and uh, there wasn't much attention paid to, to art. There were pioneers, collectors, and, but, but there really wasn't that much attention being paid until, until a few years ago to Arab art. So you started it in, in 2010. What, what, what's your, what's your, what was your vision then, and has it changed since you, since you kind of ramped it up? Um, I actually started collecting way before 2010, maybe six, seven years before that. Uh, however, in 2010, uh, the, the Sharjah government were, very, uh, were kind enough to give me a space, 475 square meters, and uh, rent-free. Uh, and um, important. Huh? <laughs> it's important, yeah, because you, know, you need support from the, from the local authorities. Uh, uh, it's very important. And uh, we were able to, to do uh, rotating exhibitions of the collection. And the collection started growing. I think when we started then, there was about three, 300 works, and now we're up to 700. Uh, if not more, I actually don't remember how many. And uh, the, the, uh, it, it was important to start to share this, this mm. collection with others. And, uh, and through opportunities such as this with, with Abu Dhabi Music and Arts uh, Foundation, we are able to show it not only in, in Sharjah, but even you know, in, in this beautiful venue uh, uh, to share it uh, in the capital city in Abu Dhabi. When you sit down and you, and you look at the arts you have, uh, do you say, oh, there's, a, there's a gap that I need to fill, um, and I'm going to go after that style or that yeah. artist? Yeah. What goes through your mind when you look at them? Yes, there is. <laughs> um, unfortunately, because I feel, I feel like, even though I'm a private collector, I feel like the collection is, uh, uh, is handled in a public manner, which means that I don't only buy things that I like, because I feel like I would be presenting a, an incomplete uh, uh, picture of art in the Arab world. So say, say that I don't like photography from uh, that era, from the, from the, specifically from the 70s. If you don't have art from, uh, uh, artworks from that era, then you are misrepresenting the, the uh, or not giving a complete picture of, of, what, uh, uh, of the different genre, the different movements of the Arab world. But that must be quite painful when you've got an artist that you fall in love with, yes. but you just say, no, I've had enough and I, I should go and, 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 and buy that. But it, or, goes, it goes against you know, my, you, you, my, my feeling. You're very right. Or, or if you have an artist and you know that you like his or her work from the 90s, if you don't buy the work that is more recent or that is uh, uh, earlier, then you, you really aren't showing the progress and the progression of the work. You're not showing how she uh, initially started with, with drawing uh, abstract and then she moved into... Uh, something else altogether. So it's, it, again, it's important to balance, and uh, and it's a very very expensive uh, habit, by the way. Give us an idea of your research process. Then you sit down, and you say, you know what, we need we need this style or, or, or this artist. We need we need five more, just this year, just five more. And how how do you go about deciding what style and what artist? Basically, is you see it 
you like it, you want it. And, and it is, it's, it's very whimsical in that sense. Sometimes you feel like this work makes sense, but sometimes you do have to study. And, and that's where the community is very important. If you speak to artists, if you speak to collectors, if you speak to uh, critics, if you speak to uh, organizations such as uh, ADMAF and, and other institutions, they will add value to your knowledge. They will tell you, by the way, do you know that this artist had uh, a period where she or he uh, uh, lived and worked in another country and they left, you know, they, they, this, uh, this uh, era left an impression on them. And so that is where the community uh, comes in. And that's why we're very fortunate to be here in the UAE. The community, uh, even though the UAE is, uh, uh, you know, it's multiple cities, it's, it's still a very tight, uh, tight-knit community. We, we know each other, uh, whether in Abu Dhabi or Dubai or Sharjah and, uh, and elsewhere in the country. And, and, and that's the, the research really comes from this, comes from speaking to the galleries, comes from speaking, speaking to the collectors. And, and more recently, we have, we have great journalists who have been writing about art, both in Arabic and in English. Mm. And this is something that we've been missing. Uh, the, the art auction houses have played a very important role. Prior, prior to the, to the uh, uh, entry of the art auction houses, you really didn't know uh, approximately how much a piece was worth. You really didn't know, uh, you didn't have a bio. Until today, a lot of the artists that you search for in the Arab world, if you put their name in English, you'll find the only bio about her is the four or five lines that the auction house wrote. Uh, we had this with, uh, with an artist in the, um, in, the, in the current exhibition. You'll see uh, an artist called Munir Al-Qadhi. Munir Al-Qadhi is a pioneer. From the 60s, she's been doing abstract art in Kuwait. There is absolutely nothing not even five words about her on the internet. And, and, the, and the, the, only, the only way that you'll find information about her in English is through the, the work that Admaf and, and Barjil have done. Uh, and I had to go into her archives and photograph archives and, 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 and to learn about her. And so we're missing a great part of our own culture, our own uh, history, uh, especially the, the more recent history, because of the lack of information. Okay, you, you, so you, you, you see the artist, you identify the artist, you speak to the likes of Admaf, um, you, you start to put the word out, but can, do you sometimes find that counterproductive? Once the foundation announces, for want of a better expression, mm -hmm. that they're interested in a particular piece of art yeah. or a particular artist, then the, the, the art world starts chattering, yeah, yeah. And, and either it becomes, uh, lots of art might come onto the market, yeah. but you might find that it, might, it doesn't necessarily represent the value that you thought it had. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, you'll see, um, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of Admaf, but I'm sure that whenever they put up a show, uh, there's more interest generated about that artist. People recognize the work, people see it for the first time. I am sure a lot of the artists that have been shown through exhibitions organized by ADMAF and other organizations, and Barjil and, 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 and in Dubai as well, it's the first time these artists get exposure to, to, to the specific public. And sometimes, uh, you know, you, you have to be careful what you wish for because uh, you, you might actually do damage to your own uh, collection process. Mm. If you advertise too much for an artist and you still haven't built enough, then, then the artworks will go up in demand, and then you, you will have a greater difficulty in finding his or her work. So it's a, it's a balance that you have to uh, maintain. Uh, in a sentence, describe your attitude towards art dealers. Well, art, art dealers can be your best friends, or can be your, let's say, your frenemies. <laughs> they, can be, they can be your best friends, or they can be, they can be uh, an obstacle to you finding works, because if, if, if they hear that there is interest, then it's a, uh, it's a process that they might ex extend uh, uh, this information to other collectors. They say there is, there is general interest in this artist. And then the next thing, you know, I had an experience just a few, few, few uh, two, three weeks ago in which I asked for a specific artist in a specific country in the, uh, in the Arab world, and I sent an email very, very quietly, and I said, I'm interested in works by this artist. And the next thing I know, I get, an, I get an email from Cairo that says that I heard that you are in that country looking for this artist. <laughs> how do you know? You know? How do you know I'm, I'm doing that? It's a small world, and the word travels. And, uh, and what happens is that the, the, uh, the next gallery you approach who has their art, they say, I heard there is, there is more interest. And I say, I am the interest. <laughs> I am the more interest. Yeah. You know, don't, yeah. don't, don't presume that there are other people buying. It's just me. So, so sometimes you can actually shoot yourself in the foot. Uh, and 
you have 280,000 followers on Twitter. Presumably some of them yes. uh, sell pieces of art. Do, or, or buy. Or buy. buy. But do, do you find yourself, when you express yeah. an interest on Twitter, yeah. that will then cause the same yes, problems? Yes, definitely. I was, I, was in, I was in meme gallery, a gallery in, uh, in Dubai that I'm a partner, and I took a photograph of an artwork by an artist called Munir Sharani. And uh, I'm not plugging in uh, uh, the art gallery that I'm called. <laughs> but, but honestly, I took a picture of, of Munir Sharani's artwork, and I said, this is a beautiful artwork. The next thing I know, I get, I get a message saying, uh, uh, you know, it's been reserved. And, and I, I found out about it through Twitter. So, so I lost the chance to buy that artwork because I advertised for the artist. So now I know. I reserve, and then I tweet. <laughs> when, when, you, when, you, when you buy a piece of work, either it, di yeah. direct yeah. Or, or, through, or through a dealer or at auction, how, how do you... What, talk us about, tell us about the process you use to value something, because they are, you know, canvases at the end of the day often, and, and it's up to you to judge what you think you should pay for it. You know how they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you, if you see that this is a beautiful artwork, you, you are really the ultimate judge. Of, if it makes you happy, it makes you happy. It doesn't mean that, that uh, uh, this expert or that collector doesn't like it. It doesn't mean that this artwork isn't valuable. It's valuable because it, make, it gives you comfort, it gives you pleasure, it makes you happy. Uh, and you might have a certain connection to it that other people don't understand. It might reflect, you know, if you, see, if you see a painting of a bridge in Paris, and you might have lived in Paris, and it just makes sense to you. And someone might tell you, but this artist has better works. Uh, but it doesn't make sense to you to buy his work or her work from another, you know, from another era. And, and as I said, uh, Matthew, the, the community is very important. That you, you pick up the phone, and you ask other collectors, and, and you say, uh, uh, you know, dear Mr. Dakano, do you know this artist? Uh, can you give me advice about this artist? Mm. And, and she or someone else might know uh, something that, that could add value. And, and, and of course, I have, I, have, uh, I have other resources as well. Um, because, I'm, because of my association with, uh, with Meme, uh, and, and Charlie is here as well. Charlie was the managing partner at Meme. We have, we have, a, we have an art library. And honest to God, I go to the library, and I, and I ask Charles for, for some uh, information about an artist. The next thing I know, there's seven books on the table, and we sit down and we research what the history of this artist is and where she, where, where she had shown and which, and which uh, collections uh, she's in, and, and that makes a huge difference. How do you legislate against, um, for want of a, a more polite expression, someone trying to rip you off? I mean, let's say, for example, it, someone could study, they'd know what art you had, they'd be thinking, he's got a gap and he hasn't got any Moroccan impressionists. Um, therefore, when, when this comes on board, I think that you know, Sultan is, you know, will be in a position where he really wants this, therefore we can, we can charge it top whack. How do you deal with that? You just say, no, I don't want to buy it. That's a legitimate business. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. No. But there's nothing wrong with saying that I know that this, this collector wants this piece. You know, I will find it. I will go and I will visit Morocco and I will travel in the, in the, in the towns and I will find that artist. And you know, and there is a there is a, a fee to be paid for that. Mm. And you, you're not, you're, nobody's forcing you to buy the artwork. Uh, and if you really want it, then you will find a way. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe t if you could afford it to buy it. Um, but I don't see anything wrong with. Uh, it doesn't. It's not opportunistic in any way. That there is a, a, a legitimate uh, uh, opportunity. Somebody wants to buy an artwork. You go out of your way. A, 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 a gallerist goes and finds it. I don't see anything wrong with that. Have you been in a situation when you've, when you've bought something that's transpired that it isn't what you were told it was? As in, as in uh, it wasn't real? Or yeah. It wasn't yeah. authentic, it was a fake. Indeed, yes. Oh, yeah. It happened. So as I said, we have about 700 artworks. I think about seven or eight were, were fake artworks. And remember, this is all art from the Arab world. So unfortunately, the, the richer the culture is in that country, the more forgeries there are. So you, you see a lot of forgeries from Iraq. For example, a lot of forgeries from, uh, from uh, uh, Syria. Uh, you see some forgeries from Morocco. You see some forgeries from, uh, uh, from Egypt. And again, the community is very important because we do not have an authority that authenticates the art. So nobody, a friend of mine tells me the story where he, where he gathered a, 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 you know, a dozen experts to tell him whether this artwork is an original or not, and none of them agreed. They, they, you know, there was four or five who said it's original, four or five who said that uh, uh, it's fake, and one or two said that it's an original, but the signature is fake. 
uh, somebody else signed it for you. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so to, to be honest with you, uh, so how we dealt with these, with these forgeries is we, um, we contact the gallery, we say, well, the family of the, artwork, of the artist told us it's not an original. And then the galleries usually, they will not say that we sold you an art uh, a fake. They would say, we, uh, we, 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 uh, we insist it's an original. And I say, well, it's your word against the artist's wife or the artist's husband. And, and so uh, who has a catalog or the daughter or the son who has a catalog of their uh, family member's work. So if the gallery is it's certain that it's an original, they should take it back. And they know that they can sell it again. It's an original. Mm -hmm. But if they, if they give you trouble, which happened to me again, uh, you know, there isn't really much that you can do. Uh, there, 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 aren't, there aren't so many cases where, uh, where uh, you know, galleries uh, would, would take back artworks. And that's why people buy from, from auctions. Yeah. Because these auction houses, you know, they have an international reputation. Yes, you pay a 20, 30% premium, but at least. But uh, you know that the, art, that the artwork is, to a large degree, you know that the artwork is an original and you know that you can exchange it in the end. Okay, well, let's talk about auctions and your strategy at auction. When, when, you, when you go to uh, an auction, let's say, you know, at, at Christie's, um, you'll have your eye on one, perhaps two pieces, depending on, depending, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on, on, on the actual sale. How, how do you mentally prepare for going into, into something like that? Because it, it, it's actually quite intense while the auction's happening. So yesterday we bought two artworks from Ayam, Ayam Auction. And I just emailed uh, the, ma the manager in the gallery there, and I trust them, and, and I said, well, this is my limit. And I know that they have professional people who could uh, you know, uh, stagger the prices and not go in, boom, you know, boom, $20,000. You know, first bid. We've got somebody who will start it at, uh, at that high price. Um, and another thing you can do is ask a friend to bid on your behalf. Uh, another thing you could do is, I mean, if you bid on your behalf and, you, and people see that you're a collector, uh, it, sometimes you could do yourself a disservice. Mm. Uh, a couple of times I knew that there was a, a large institution in the region who wanted to buy an artwork, and I was very unhappy with the fact that they were going to buy it. And so I kept bidding up the price to cost them money. And then in the end, they did buy the work. So at one point in time, I was scared that I might get it. I <laughs> but but uh, do, do, do you ever find yourself being, is there a danger about being competitive and thinking, you know, I, I like that piece of art, but I, I like it in a way that I want to have it because I don't want them to have it. Well, let me tell you that, uh, you know, there is some satisfaction to being the underbidder in a, in a great artwork. So, so if, you, if you push up a piece and you are the underbidder, you know that you put up a fight. Uh, and then it, w it went to this other collector or this institution, you know that when this institution or this collector buys, that institution, that museum, put a lot of effort and, and it, they, they were not Sultan who bought, they were not a regular person. They, they had their researchers, they had their, uh, their team that studies the, uh, the, ar the artwork, they know the value, they know, they, you know, they probably produced a, this is how the Guggenheim buys, mm. this is why the, how the Louvre buys, they don't just buy whimsically, they have a team that studies the artwork and, and issues a, a paper, uh, uh, you know, a study of the, of the importance of the work. So if you were the underbidder to a piece that a museum wanted, you feel like you did the right thing, that you went or, or your taste is really within the, uh, the same uh, uh, professionalism of these museums. Yeah, it's, quite, it's quite reaffirming, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes. Um, uh, <clears throat> what's your policy towards selling art? I've, I've never sold uh, art. From, from my Arab collection, from the 700 artworks, I've never sold a single piece. Why? What we have, I'm not in the business of selling the art, but what we have done is we have de-accessed art through, uh, uh, through charity auctions. So I have a list of artworks that I have that when sometimes charities approach us and they say, would you mind donating pieces? So we have a list of maybe 30, 40 artworks that I still like, but then it's part of your duty to the community to, to rotate. And so you, you, you give them and, and you know that, it, that, it, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that this artwork will go to, to another person and you will also be raising money to, uh, to a good cause. But is there part of you ever that that, that might be, t I know what your answer is going to be in advance, but in the way that you, a, a football team buys a footballer young, um, nurtures the footballer, and then sells him for a great price because they can then buy three players who are almost nearly as good. Do you ever find yourself, if you, if you for example, have identified an artist and helped drive their popularity within the art world, you could sell one of their pictures and buy three, four, five more of another person's. No, but I'll tell you what I do. 
we have some artworks that I don't particularly like, but I know that someone else wants, and I'm willing to barter with another piece that they have. So this okay. is something that I'm willing to do. That I, okay. I have this piece that you like, you have a piece that I like, and so I, I'm willing to barter with you. So, I mean, so were you saying you, 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 some, you do find when you look at the collection yeah. that there are some that you've, you've looked at enough or you feel doesn't necessarily fit in, I'd happily move it around? Again, Matthew, the whole point is that I feel like, even though I'm an individual, I feel like this is a public collection. Yeah. I feel like the collection is not owned by me. I feel like the collection belongs to a greater, uh, uh, the greater community. And so when I buy, I don't buy because I like it. I buy because it is important to reflect a certain period of, uh, of time or a certain uh, movement in the Arab world. So the, the, the investment angle of art is just not something that, 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 you, you, that interests you? We have, we have complete records of all the artworks that we bought. We actually do financial uh, bookkeeping. So, uh, because I it's have, been one of the great counter-cyclical investments of the last 20, 30 years. Yes, it, yes, yes. It, it it's, constantly it's, goes up it's regard, regardless. It's maintained its value very, uh, very well. In fact, a lot of the artists here, including Abdul Qadir Reis, who uh, if, uh, one of the greatest artists from the UAE, you know that you're, you're putting money into, into quality, uh, quality art, uh, and um, it's, it's never a bad investment, really. Uh, how, how do you enjoy the art yourself? Okay, so uh, um, I bought a house in Dubai, and I found out that I had 96 artworks in the house. <laughs> I have art on the ceiling. I have art in the bathroom. Uh, so, so just tells you, I won't tell you which artists are there. I actually, <laughs> I like the artworks a lot. I hope you framed it properly yeah. in the bathroom. No, but they're framed, they're framed with glass, <laughs> protected with glass and everything. But, but, I, but, but it's, you know, it's because you want to show the piece and you don't want it to stay in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the storage facility for another five years. You want to show it. And, and during uh, our Dubai and whenever delegations, so for example, we had a delegation coming from Abu Dhabi recently who came to visit the Guggenheim here and they came to visit us and, and we showed them the, uh, the collection in Barjil in, in Sharjah and then I took them to the house in Dubai. And so you want to have an opportunity to show the, show the work. And uh, of course, through, through, the, through the, uh, this wonderful opportunity, again, thanks to Admaf, we can show more art in, 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 uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, uh, so the, the, the exposure is much higher. And, and believe it or not, artists want their work to be exposed. Artists do not want their art to go into storage. No. Uh, and, and we've had a number of artists who have either, give, either, either given us a large discount or, or given us artworks for free because they know that we'll be showing uh, uh, this piece. Uh, uh, so it's, it's a big responsibility, Matthew. How much pleasure do you, do you derive from watching other people look at the art that you've put together? I mean, when it all boils down to it, is that one of the, the major drivers? You're, you're doing it for other people. Yeah. I, uh, first of all, I don't put it together. I have a great team. Uh, Suhaila is the curator of the show uh, upstairs. And of course, she was aided by the wonderful team at, uh, at ADMAF. Uh, so I don't put it together, uh, but I, it gives me a, a great deal of pleasure to see people, uh, even if they look at a piece and they don't understand it, and, and you see that they're criticizing it, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy, I, as long as the artwork makes you think, mm -hmm. even if you think this is not a good artwork, at least if you analyze it, you're opening the door to analytical, uh, to say, well, I don't like this piece, unlike the other one that we saw. So you already started this conversation. And, um, and it gives me, I mean, a great, great deal of, uh, of pleasure to see people interact, enjoy the work, ask about the artworks. We have, we have a lot of collectors who, most of our collection is online. We have 470 something pieces, 470 plus pieces on the website. A lot of people don't put their collection online. We have, the majority of our pieces are online and we're just photographing the others. Um, we have people who call us and say, where can I buy this artwork from? I, 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 like, I like this piece. Are you, would you sell this artwork? Mm. Of course, the answer is always no, but we direct them to, uh, if possible, a place that would sell the artwork. In, in terms of sparking the analytical thought and, and discussion about what art should be in terms of provoking people to talk about what it represents uh, and to trigger things in their mind, notwithstanding the great work that ADMAF do and you guys do with, with schools, do you think that children spend enough time being taken into uh, an exhibition in a gallery environment, 
and allow us to look at paintings and then to reflect upon them afterwards. Um, as you said, uh, ADMAF has put together a wonderful uh, program that includes uh, 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 student visits. And I saw uh, uh, one of the, uh, um, on the, on the statement outside, it said suitable for kids from three to five. So you really can start you know, early enough. And now with the iPads, kids can start even at the age of two, maybe earlier, to, to explore their, uh, their artistic skills. But this is a, a collective responsibility. So you can't say the schools have responsibility. The parents have responsibility. Mm. The uncles and the aunts have responsibility. The brothers and the sisters have responsibility to, to each other. When parents travel, uh, they should take their kids to museums. And in Abu Dhabi, we've got so much going on. You've got that wonderful show in Saadiyat, 100 objects from around the world. This is a world-class exhibition. Oh, it's and uh, if I may say, this exhibition upstairs is also a world-class exhibition. Uh, and I just learned today that this is one of the official exhibits of the World Museum Day. Is that right? The World Museum Day, it's on their website, mm. that this is one of the World Museum Day exhibits. So it's, again, it's a world-class show. In, in Abu Dhabi, you have, uh, uh, I mean, maybe a dozen exhibitions a year uh, that are uh, truly uh, outstanding in, Abu, in Dubai, in Sharjah. So there's so much going on in the UAE. There is absolutely no excuse. So whenever someone complains and says, there isn't enough culture in the UAE, I say there's too much. There's so much that I can't keep up. We can't keep up with the opening. No, I, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm pushing you in the direction of, do you think that institutionally enough children are not made to yeah. go, but are pushed in that direction? Do you think, do you think that, no. that there's, there's so much that yeah. w we're not short of opportunities yes, yes, here, yes. but are they taken up to the extent that you would like them to be taken no, up? No, not at all. I mean, there, there, there are, but I, I feel, and this might be my own, uh, uh, my own impression, I feel like people are attracted to the, 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 the exhibitions or the, 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 the plays in the theater or uh, shows that, that relate to their own culture. But what we have in the UAE that's unique to the region is you do have sh plays and, and exhibitions from India. You do have plays and exhibitions from Africa. You do have uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, writers and, and authors from, from, uh, from Africa and from Europe and from Latin America who come from the, for the Abu Dhabi Book Fair. Mm. And so this is a, a unique country in the sense that you can broaden your horizon more than any other country in the region. Uh, so it's not enough for you if, you, if you are from Europe or if you are from the Middle East, to go and constantly try and visit exhibitions only from the Middle East or, or only from your part of the world. Mm. You should make full use of all the uh, cultural events, the international cultural events that are from, you know, from, the other, uh, from the other parts of the world that you don't necessarily belong to. Mm. Uh, broadly speaking, the, 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 the UAE's art scene is in yeah. pretty good health, right? It, it is the best art scene in the region. It is, in, it is not comparable to any art scene in any country in, in, in the Middle East, I think. What you have, you have foundations that commission and show art, whether it's Sharjah Art Foundation, whether it's Abu Dhabi Music and Art Foundation. Uh, then you have, uh, you have the, the fairs, uh, Dubai, uh, Abu Dhabi Fair, you have the Sharjah Biennial, uh, and then you have the galleries in Dubai, uh, the, the commercial galleries. So you have a, a complete ecosystem, the production, the showing, the museums, the Guggenheim, the Louvre that are collecting. So there is no other uh, 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 country in the Middle East that has the entire cycle. Yes, you have, you have certain countries that have galleries, but where are the collectors? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have collectors in some countries, but where are the galleries? Think, think of, I mean, I won't mention any states, but even in the Gulf, uh, where are the museums? You know? uh, so the UAE is unique that the entire ecosystem of the art industry exists here. And do you, what's, what's your, your, um, your attitude towards buying homegrown UAE art? Um, I, I mean, how much do you, you, know, how, you know, do you, do you kind of have a, a strategy in terms of I think we should have this much or this percentage, or is it just a case by case basis? I think I have a responsibility because I'm from the UAE, so I have that added responsibility. However, I, I, I don't want to, to buy art just because from the UAE. It's important to maintain a certain quality, mm -hmm. and, uh, and there, there, is a, there is a lot of high quality uh, UAE art, um, and I, I think. Uh, I think we've, we've so far maintained that, that quality. And, and you want artists to aspire to a higher, uh, uh, a higher quality of art. So it's unfair to these Emirati artists who are, uh, you know, who are producing high quality art for you to, to put them in, uh, uh, in the same league as, as people who don't invest as, so much, as much time, who don't as, in, invest as, as much energy in, uh, in their art. 
Um, I, I've spoken to a, a number of Emirati artists of a, of a, of a certain age, a little yeah. bit older, and, and yeah. when they started out, they found it very difficult to convince their yeah. families yeah. that becoming an artist yes, yes, was yes. A, uh, a viable trade. Right. You know, and, and I quote, that's fine, you can be an artist, but go and get an engineering degree as first. A side, as a side. Uh, it, is that changed? Um, this is a process that took place all over the world. So um, whether it's in Europe or even in, 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 in the Middle East, uh, uh, at, certain, at certain times, of course. Uh, I think in the UAE now, artists can make a living out of, out of their art. They ca you can be a professional artist. Again, uh, the example of Abdul Qadir Reis, the example of Najat Makki. Uh, so, many, uh, so many artists that are here in our show are, are full-time artists. Uh, I think... Uh, there is the added responsibility uh, to, towards the rest of the community to encourage them, to encourage their families, because we all know each other, mm. to tell them, let your daughter, let your son, don't discourage them from being a full-time artist. Uh, so it's happening. Um, it's like professional footballers. Mm. I, mean, I know very little about football, but this is a recent phenomenon where these athletes, athletes can become professional athletes rather than working in the government and playing football on the side. Um, and, and by the way, the, the quality of the art improves when they have, uh, when they have in, enough time to, in, to invest in, in reading and, and studying rather than having a full-time nine-to-five job. Do, do, you, do you commission? Uh, how, to, how can I answer this question? Uh, so commissioning basically involves you going to the artist and saying, I'd like you to make me an artwork about this so-and-so uh, issue. A couple of times I've done it, and it turned out to be... Uh, uh, not exactly what I was looking for, and then you had to buy it. So I'm not, you know, you're like, you're like how am I going to sell it to you? You commissioned it. I don't like it. It's commissioned. So, but so. I, but you know, there must be a time when you think, oh, look, events in, in, in Egypt uh, a couple of years ago, yeah. there are three fantastic modern yeah. Egyptian artists. Yeah. They're going to do something based on yeah. what's happened. Yeah. I might as well ring them up and say, how about you do it? And, and we put it straight in. You're right. You're right. It makes all the sense in the world, but I've had bad luck with it. <laughs> so there, there was an artist that I liked very much, and he's, he's, he's uh, I shouldn't say which country, he's, he's a fairly uh, 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 established artist, and I told him, I told him uh, this is what I like, I like your work with the colors, I like the yellow, you know, I like this bright colors in your work, and he created a piece that was basically a nude woman, and I said, it's kind of difficult for me, you know, and, and I had to kind of, uh, uh, I had to buy it, but can I show it? That's the question. So, um, what, what do you think? I'd mentioned events in Egypt, the Arab Spring. In, in, in the collection we're going to look, look at uh, in a minute, it's all about the, yeah. the, the 20th century yes, yes, yes. and the various cultural yeah. and industrial events uh, and movements that, yeah. shaped the, that shaped the art world and that the, the art world yes. reflected over the course yeah. of time. What, if we're sitting here in 100 years' time, what, are you gonna, what do you imagine the main drivers for the art world of the last 14 years of this millennium might be? So, uh, as Matthew said, the artworks uh, from, uh, that you will see upstairs, they tackle issues such as the building of the high dam in Egypt. Uh, they tackle issues such as the, uh, the identity of the minorities, uh, Berber and Azir in North Africa. They, they, they tackle issues such as the pearl diving industry and the demise of the pearl diving industry in the Gulf. So historical events that, uh, that still resonate today in, in the region. What I see uh, in maybe in 100 years, I think the, 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 the rise of technology, the rise of graffiti art, uh, the, 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 the uh, wonderful uh, rise of you know, women, women artists in the region, that, that uh, uh, there is a much greater representation of female art. Um, new media, for example, you see a lot of artists uh, using new media, whether it's video, film, collage, mm. uh, all of this is, uh, is something that will be reflected 100 years from today. Fantastic. Right, let's, let's, uh, would anyone like to ask Sultan a question? We're going to throw it open to the floor for about five minutes. Don't. Check. Transformers we know from TV is more of the mechanic. But Sultan, I think you um, uh, underestimate the value and the brand you have. You are a transformer. You have taken an era of time where people um, were skeptical about values of art in any aspect. And by people going to your Twitter, 
uh, and reading just the path, you, people can live your experience when you go to Egypt, and whether it's a political experience or an art. You share a lot, and that in itself is, is something very unique. It has brought uh, a lot of impact on people. In the old days, the changes come is when someone proves it. But for you, it's completely different. You are a transformer. You've changed the society in the way that you actually had approached the artwork, the politics, the business, mm -hmm. and engaged youth. Um, we always joke about who's going to keep up with Sultan in terms of number of uh, followers when it comes to Twitter. There was a reason for that. Yeah. When you say that there was an artwork and somebody wanted it, uh, the minute you ask about it, because you ought to prove a, 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 you know, a stamp of approval uh, and an authority on that, because, because people trust your brand. And um, my question comes in is, how can we... Um, 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 how can we actually spread this legacy of yours? Because today, that's a huge responsibility of what you are and what you're about. Um, that's, um, you, are, you are a pioneer. You don't see yourself that way, we do. I come from a, an engineering generation where computer uh, science was something totally unknown, and then all of a sudden it changed the world. What you have done is really reinstated the value of art and the, the mix of art, not just one. But there's a responsibility toward um, acceptance and the youth and the way they, they can carry themselves going forward. Um, and I, I want to ask, how, can you, how could you actually do that? Um, this is a question that comes from one of the greatest pioneers in the, in the, in, in the Gulf. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, look. Lubna Al Qasmi, obviously, Sheikh Lubna Al Qasmi, Her Excellency, uh, is one of the uh, uh, one of the I think one of the leading examples of of for for people in the Gulf and in the region, uh, uh, a pioneer in education in government, the first female uh, minister in the in the UAE, and you're sitting next to another pioneer, uh, Mr. Dal Khamis Kano, who has put so much effort in 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 reaching out to the youth in in the UAE. So so uh, uh, I think. Uh, this is a collective responsibility, and responsibility is the main word here that you used. Um, you don't have, pe people here don't have to have access to the funds to buy the art. You could just, you could just photograph and curate, uh, 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 you know, on Twitter or Facebook, a wonderful collection that you, uh, uh, that you aspire to, that you think is beautiful. So um, it really isn't about uh, uh, Sultan, but it is about... Uh, you know, I, have, I had an opportunity, I was very blessed with this opportunity, and I feel like I maximized it. It took a lot of courage, though. It, you see the business, your family's in the business, but that was aside, yet this is the path you took. It's, uh, it's, it's a choice you made, and you took a lot of courage with it. Sheikha, uh, you also studied and you went into government. You studied business and you went into government, and maybe that's why you're so successful, is because you're able to, to uh, bring together two different, two different worlds. But... Uh, I think all of us have this responsibility, and uh, and look at the turnout here. Look at the turnout from from all over the uh, from all over the UAE. So this is just an example that people are interested in art and culture, and and now I use my Twitter feed to to spread awareness about art. So uh, I think I'll continue doing that. It's it's a much nicer uh, uh, issue to deal with than politics. I have to say. I'm uh, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. The gentleman at the back. A okay, can I ask you a question? You've done a great job collecting all the artwork from the Middle East. And do you have any plan to show that culture or to share it, for example, the other European country or other part of the world? Because it's important we have that culture in your collection, but is there any plan to show it or to introduce that culture or the art to other parts of the world? We... Uh we, we had a show that came down just two days ago in Antwerp, the Modern Art Museum in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Antwerp. And uh, we, had, we had loaned them five artworks. Last year, we put together a show in Singapore. Uh, uh, so thank you very much. To, we have a uh, Singaporean uh, ambassador here who is a great supporter of, uh, of arts and, 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 and the UAE relations with, with Singapore. Gulf relations, I think, with, with, uh, with Singapore. Um, so we, we did a show in Singapore last year that had... 58,000 visitors, uh, two months uh, show contemporary Arab art. So exactly the opposite of what you're going to see now. What you're going to see now is uh, classical, modern art. We put together a very fresh, a new, a new collection. We sent art to Miami. We sent art to Vancouver, to Istanbul, to Stuttgart, to uh, Berlin, to, um, I can't remember actually, to Japan, to, 
uh, huh? Washington DC, thank you very much to the, to the wonderful curator of the show, Noura Suwedi. The, there's a, thank you. There is, a, there, there is an Emirati art exhibition touring uh, the US today, curated by, uh, co-curated by Noura Suwedi. And I think your opening was last week in, in which venue? Yeah, which is a gorgeous venue if, ever, if you ever visit. It's worth seeing the venue and, and we were very fortunate that Emirati art is being shown there until when? Okay, so, uh, so, so, so we, we do try and share. I think people in the UAE want to share the, the art and culture of the UAE. So it's, uh, none of us would, would, uh, would, would uh, hesitate for a second to share the art. This lady at the front. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I want to add also the teaching value of your collection. Because I take my students from NYU Abu Dhabi, and uh, they immediately uh, link uh, the the theory or the lectures to the, your collection. Because that, I think, is a proof that you have an excellent taste and a good eye. But more than that, the value of the history. That means you've been visiting the the library quite often at the meme gallery. But I must say that the periods in, the, in my classes, we uh, touch at least a uh, large part on the modern art period. And uh, your collection has been amazing help for us in teaching. And we took the students there more than once. I want to add that's exceedingly important uh, to show the modern period as well as the uh, contemporary. Thank you very much. Thank you, for thank that. you, Salwa. Thank you, Dr. Salwa. So, so if you, for those of you who don't know, this is uh, Salwa Maghdadi, one of the greatest uh, scholars uh, and writers about uh, art from the Arab world, modern art. So, so art that is from the uh, 20th century. And we've we've actually uh, asked her to write uh, 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 introduction or an essay to to one of the one of the previous shows that that we had. Um, what she meant, what she was saying is uh, regarding the the modern collection. This is. This is the biggest modern art show ever in the UAE. 56 artworks, they've never been shown. There are artworks upstairs that I have never seen before today. Maybe I have never seen them. 15 artworks I have never seen, and so I'm excited to go and, and, and share them with you. Uh, we've got a question over there. I just need to make sure that if you put your hand up, then the microphone will reach you sooner rather than later. Very important, yeah. Thank you. OK. <laughs> OK. Uh, as an Edma uh, Young Media Leader, my question is, what advice you, what advice you would give to students who want to study uh, art journalism? Who want to study art? Yeah. Uh, art journalism. Art, art, uh, art journalism. Yeah. Journalism of art. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you have, uh, what a great question. Uh, first of all, speak to Ms. Huda Khamis Kanu, who will give you advice. That's the first thing you do. That's your default setting. And second, second, you have one. Of the, we have a great uh, uh, art journalist here in this room, uh, Anna, Anna, Anna Seaman, who has written uh, who has written the the preview yesterday in the National, a wonderful uh, uh, essay about or a, a, a report about the show upstairs. So you do have at the national, at the local level, you have great. Writers, I think uh, Antonia Carver in uh, in, uh, in Dubai uh, ran a series on uh, on uh, uh, critiquing art. So look, when you write about art, sometimes you will make uh, some people not so happy because it's a it's a very sensitive issue because you might critique, you might say, well, uh, this show is good, however, it doesn't have any women. Like this is something that we had in uh, in one of our previous shows. We showed almost an all-male uh, uh, exhi exhibition. And I was, you know, uh, I actually never thought about it, but uh, I was happy to receive that kind of criticism. So uh, you might make some people uh, unhappy, but it's a very, very important job. I, I, I would encourage you to, to pursue art journalism because we don't have enough uh, art journalists. Am I right, Anna? Yes. We, yeah, we don't have enough art journalists. We have quality like Anna, but we don't have quantity. So we need more. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? Yeah. We've got a, little, a lady over there. Hi. Um, I was wondering what sort of artistic background you had in order to make your critiques on the art pieces that you want to purchase, and what sort of artistic elements do you put into consideration when choosing your pieces? 
So the theme that I have is mostly Arab world theme. So uh, again, as I said, I try to reflect uh, movements, uh, themes within the Arab world, different ethnic groups. Um, um, I started with a very uh, uh, kind of male-biased collection. I had to make sure that I have women represented in the, in the collection. Uh, I had to make sure that I had the diaspora represented, the, the Arabs who live in Europe and America and elsewhere represented. Um, so I, I want to stress that the community is a very, very important uh, uh, element. So speaking to other collectors, speaking to journalists, speaking to uh, galleries, you, you kind of expand your horizon, and then, and then you can make a better an, an informed decision when you buy an artwork. But really, all that is, 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 is on one hand. The other hand is, if you like the artwork, buy it. You know, this is just whimsical. It makes sense to you. It might not make sense to somebody else. Uh, we've got time for one more question. And if, oh, it's gentle at the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to go on Twitter. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Sultan. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, how do you see the balance between uh, the culture of creating art and uh, the balance between uh, the ethics and morals of society? And that's a, uh, yeah. He gave you an easy one to end that up That was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed, I'm going to have a word with you after this. <laughs> so so uh, how do you see the balance between ethics and, 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 and morality? Yeah. Wow. I don't know who wants to take a, a stab at that. I don't you got know how, you've got 142 characters. I don't know how to answer that. Look, look. Sometimes, sometimes there are artworks that you don't agree with generally that are important to be represented. So, so there are, there are uh, in museums in, uh, in, in, in Europe and, uh, and elsewhere around the world, there are artworks that are about a very difficult era. There are artworks that are maybe overtly racist. There are artworks that are um, something that you don't agree with, but it represents an era. Do you look it up and say this never existed? Or do you try and, uh, and study it and open it up for people to, to study why was this kind of, uh, um, wh why was this person represented that way? Why were all people of uh, color represented in a, in a negative way? Why were immigrants represented in so and so way? So sometimes, um, you know, it's important to, to, to study and these, these artworks represent a, a specific uh, era in history and you can discount it, you can say, well, uh, uh, draw for me a, uh, something that is more utopian. Well, utopia doesn't exist. Sometimes there are artworks that don't make sense to you or you don't agree with, but you need to represent them in, uh, uh, in, uh, for the public to study and, and, and to learn from, and hopefully never repeat again. Okay, Sultan, that, that, that was, that was uh, far too difficult a question to wrap yeah. up a conversation of this depth on. We'll give, you, yeah. we'll give you an easy one. Your house is burning down. You've got two arms. I'm you, you, you need to take two pieces of art out with you. Which two are they and why? And you do have enough time to get a ladder up to go onto the ceiling of your bathroom and bring it down if wow. you want to do that. Just two artworks. Just two. Wow. In the house or the store? Uh, I'll, ma I'll make it easy for you, the house. Can I call friends? No. <laughs> two artworks. Just two. I mean, if you have... And, and you don't have a huge amount of time. That's like, asking me, that's like asking me you have four kids in the house, you have to rescue two. Which one, which, which one do you rescue? <laughs> but but to, to, be, to be honest with you... Uh, okay, let me, let me answer this way. To be honest with you, again, because I feel like my collection is, impo is, is, a, is a public collection, I would rescue a piece that, that I love for me personally, and I would rescue a piece that's important historically. Right, we will allow that answer. Yeah. Thank you very much. Huh? <laughs> the ones in the bathroom is okay. <laughs> they can stay there. <laughs> because they're prints. <laughs> I can print them again, they're prints. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please make your way upstairs for the gallery to the, for the official opening of Sky Over the East. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.